Hello. Um, I wanted to speak about something today which has been on my mind. I've been watching these Ayn Rand videos. I read The Fountainhead. Um, I feel that um, Ayn Rand has been a very influential philosopher for the 20th century, 21st century uh, politics and economics, especially in the United States. The, the whole, I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong about this, but a lot of what is now called the libertarian movement, I think, a lot of that was inspired by Ayn Rand. The um, concept, that, uh, if I understand it correctly, is that um, she believes in what she calls a, um, objectivism, which is that she doesn't believe anything without any objective proof, so she claims. Uh, and therefore, she's an atheist. And therefore, she feels that individual people who are superior are restricted by governments and and social mores and so forth and it re, it it stops people from being able to achieve their highest levels of achievement you know and 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 she also goes on and she believes that the best possible outcomes economically and uh, socially and all that if she, if she believes she don't even believe in the word socially but the best possible outcomes come from a laissez-faire government, whereas very little taxes and very little government regulations on businesses and individuals, people who want to go out and smoke dope should be allowed to smoke dope, but people who want to go out and start businesses shouldn't have any restrictions on the, from the government as far as taxation. And, and she also doesn't think that people should help other people uh, in an altruistic way, meaning things like uh, Section 8 housing or food stamps, she thinks is a crime, a, a sin in a way. Now, now you know, I, I want to show that there is a contradiction in her thinking, which I'm sure she had a good argument against if I pointed it out. And that is to say she doesn't believe that anything should be followed and believed that isn't objectively observed in nature. You know, like you can run an experiment and prove it. Well, let's just say that um, she makes a gigantic assumption in, in sort of a magical thinking way when she says that she thinks that the best possible government, the best possible system would be a completely laissez-faire government that doesn't have any uh, socialist restrictions. I mean, she says that they should be like police and, and courts, and, and essentially that should be the all of the government. And, and of course, she grew up in, in Stalinist Russia, you know, the, the height of the communist era, and she hated it. And so what she's done is... Uh, She's completely rejected any form of socialism whatsoever and believe that we should have a, a pure form of capitalism. And the problem with her thinking is it's, ob it's not objective. She has a fantasy world that she's promoting. That is to say that uh, what country in the history of the world, or even today, has a completely laissez-faire government? I mean, if you could show me one and show me how well it worked, then you would say, look, there's objective proof that such a thing works and such a thing is the best possible outcome for all people. However, as far as I know, except for the what you would call the, the jungle, the wild you know, hunter-gatherers in the jungle who ran around and, um, you know, the, if they could capture the other side and eat the eat them, you know, the cannibals in the jungle. Well, that was a completely laissez-faire thing, I suppose. You know, there were no governments to control what people did, and uh, and I don't think it worked all that great, to be honest with you. Um, but that's what I have a problem with her, is um, she acts as though there is 
some sort of proof that a laissez-faire government would even work completely because nothing like that has ever really existed. You know, I, I mean, recently uh, they did a little experiment in the state of Kansas with that brown bent guy, and uh, they no, no, you know, this the, the arguments are out there, but what they did is they they got a very big majority Republican elected into the um, legislature and. And among them were uh, very libertarian type uh, people who decided to cut the taxes. They got rid of all uh, taxes on companies and especially small businesses, but all businesses, no taxes. And then even cut the taxes on on the average uh, Kansas person. And, and then they waited a couple of years to see what would happen. And what happened was that Kansas nearly went broke. They they had to cut the the uh, they, the highway department. They had to cut the school systems. They they ended up um, almost putting a couple of school systems out of business, so that the courts had to step in and say you weren't adhering to the Constitution of the uh, of the United States or the Constitution of Kansas because you weren't upholding the um, requirement that there's a free and appropriate education for all people. And, and they ended up with this giant deficit that they had to like cut all services. Well, what they claim and what Ayn Rand claimed should have happened is that there should have been a boom. You know, there should have been businesses moving into Kansas left and right to take advantage of these no taxes. And, and there should have been, uh, uh, people developing new entrepreneur businesses from within Kansas so that they could all prosper at a greater rate. And then everybody would be able to hire more people and people would, there would be no unemployment and there would be no, um, you know, there would be no deficit because the more people they hired, the little bit of income tax that they did charge, there'd be more people working and that would bring in more revenue. Well, none of that happened. None of that happened. What, what happened was companies were a little bit afraid of going into Kansas because the roads were falling apart and, and they had a higher unemployment rate than any other state in the country. And their school systems were suffering. And who wants to move their kids into a, a place where the schools are, are stinky, you know? So they turned around and they, they canceled the tax cuts, and they overrode the governor's veto. It didn't work. The Ayn Rand version of reality and that small little experiment, and, and you know, we're supposed to only take things on, on objective proof. You know, that's the idea behind objectivism. It, it's, well, let me offer you my alternative version of reality which I've expressed in earlier videos already, by the way. And that is my um, concept that capitalism and socialism are not really two sides of the same coin. Um, that it's not an either or proposition. And it's certainly uh, one thing could exist without the other. Well, actually, uh, socialism would not exist without capitalism. And I say that because I don't think that in any organized commercial way, capitalism will not stop existing. I mean, it's a natural form of economics that arises spontaneously out of human nature. That's what capitalism is. You won't be able to completely get rid of capitalism. They've tried. They tried it in Soviet Russia. They tried it. In the past, it's it, it, it's not something that you actually even design. As I look at it, it, it's so complex because every single economic transaction that exists between two people or groups of people is a capitalist transaction. And everybody is always operating in a business-like manner where they have a meeting of the minds deciding upon, you're going to pay this much for this thing or this this service well 
there's going to be a negotiation, you know, saying, well, you're going to pay a lot. Well, I'm only going to pay a little. And then they fight about it. And, and finally, uh, they have uh, somebody uh, make a decision between the two people what the price is going to be. See, that's the invisible hand, as, as Adam Smith likes to talk about, it, that controls the price of a product. It's, it, it happens automatically in, in a marketplace because that, in between two people is one thing, but, but when you multiply that times a billion transactions a day, it, it becomes an extremely complicated but um, efficient way of, of enacting uh, economics. And it never stops happening, by the way. That's my main point. It, well, what is socialism? Socialism does not exist in some situations. It's, if you're, you know, in the warlords, you know, and back in the time of Genghis Khan, you know, you're, you're in your village and the Genghis Khan and his hordes ride into the village and, and they hold, a, they hold a sword to your throat and say, you're going to give me all the food you have in your house or I'll cut your throat. So there's the business deal. My throat, you'll give me my throat and I'll give you my, all my stuff. You know, that's a purely capitalist enterprise right there. And it's not very nice. So what happens is all the people get together and they say, man, we can't do this. They form an organization to put together a, an army and a police force to fight against these people. That's called socialism. See, it's really simple. Socialism is not natural. It's an, it's a type of technology. It's a engineered technology by a people. People get together and they they decide that they're going to put together some sort of a governing uh, over property, and then they're going to uh, enforce that government. Uh, upon the area, even all the capitalists, the, who are the guys with the swords, and and actually that's what that's what socialism is. It's a, it's a type of a human technology where people organize a government. Any government in the world that exists ever with if that is a, that has anything to do with service to the people is a socialism. Now. That includes the most capitalist countries on earth. That includes the um, Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution is a socialist document. And people don't realize that, but it, it, it talks about promoting the general welfare and, and um, ensuring domestic tranquility, providing for the common defense. Socialism, socialism, socialism. All, you know, it's socialism. And, 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 you know, when they say ensure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity, that could be capitalism, you know, right there. You know, we freedom in, in, in capitalism. You know, we, we whenever you don't, when you take away freedom, you, you're taking away capitalism. But anything else is a, is a social, con, uh, a social contract that is socialism. And, and, and so my idea is uh, com in opposition to Ayn Rand is that, you know, we need both. We, 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 well, we don't, we need both. I mean, we have capitalism. I'm, I'm telling you that capitalism it happens naturally. It, it, it spontaneously occurs in the marketplace. So you don't really have to design capitalism. It just exists. We need socialism. Socialism is a way to control capitalism. And, and the way that, you know, the river is a natural force. It cannot be stopped. Nobody can stop the Mississippi River. Nobody can stop the Columbia River. But they can put dams on the Columbia River to generate electricity. See, that's like socialism. Socialism is a, a designed technology that they put onto a natural force in order to use it to some benefit that they've decided. And, you know, I, I just want to say my last concept for the future is to come to grips with this reality and to be nice. 
If everybody were nice to each other, we would be able to live a lot better. Thank you.